So this piece of equipment that I have here is newest to the farm. This is the Kubota M5-091. It is dirty. Um, I've put about 15 hours on it so far. And this is a, another piece of equipment we've been waiting a long time to acquire and replace some of our older equipment. It's supposed to be 92 and a half uh, engine horsepower. And it's got the LA1854 loader on the front. It's dirty because I've been uh, disking already, bush hogging, and seeding some wheat and fertilizing it. After all, it is a working farm, so I don't get to give you the video right off the truck, plus I'm going to play with it first. Um, I've got dual remotes on the rear here, seven-way power plug. Everything on the rear of this is heavy duty. Um, it's got the exterior lift hydraulics. Uh, those is already part of it as far as this tractor goes. The only add-ons um, that I have is the front end loader, the light package, buddy seat, and I upgraded to an air ride seat, which has been very nice so far. Inside of the cab, there's plenty of room. Um, I'm six four, six five, somewhere in the neighborhood. Just missed my, my boots. I already got the floor dirty enough. Jumping in and out, making sure I'm seating good. But inside here, you have your control panel. Pretty much everything's uh, to my right hand side. You got your PTO, rear hydraulics, parking brake, um, dual speed with stick, six on the stick. So this is 12 forward, 12 reverse, throttle three-point hitch draft control well sorry three-point hitch depth gauge and draft control and then you have your three-prong power plug and a cigarette lighter for a phone charger cup holder a little bit of storage back here now all these buttons up through here oh um the rear windshield wiper was add-on um, so I added it on and then this is the lighting package for the front and rear of the tractor <clears throat> Down in the floor you have the tilt steering so you push this lever and that Gets us to where we need to be here Start the, start the thing up Put 12 and a half hours on it so far. And like the excavator, I will come back and do a video when I have more hours on it. I'll explain what I like and what I don't like. So far, the shuttle shift forward and reverse has been fantastic. Now, if you forget the parking brake on, it does get a little annoying. <laughs> but it's going to make sure you don't take off and park. This is your front windshield wipers and washer fluid. And intermittent and then on all the time. And then on all the time if you hold it down, um, it will put your windshield wiper fluid out. Center's neutral. And then emergency lights. Standard lights that come on the track. I haven't even used them yet. And then you have um, your... DPF and regeneration here. I'm not sure what, hadn't read the book completely on what all this does. I'm assuming. Oh, okay. So this has got a trip on it. Show how many hours since your last service. I 
I've actually put 12.3 hours on it. There's 0.2 hours on it when I got it from the, or no, there's 2.2 hours on it when I got from the dealer. And that's just from moving it around the lot and getting everything set up and unloaded and loaded. It had no hours on it, it's brand new. Still have plastic on the seat. Oh, and down here, it does have the 540 uh, PTO with the fuel saving uh, feature for your like bush hogging or doing something you don't require the full horsepower of the tractor. I will be doing some videos uh, working with this tractor. Um, as you can tell, it's been raining here today. And um, so I had to get this weed in the ground. Full wheel drive is down here to your left. And of course, here's your buddy seat that flips up. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The, um, I don't have a stereo in here. I didn't want the stock one that came from Kubota. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I wanted to be able to pick my stereo system, heating AC, of course. I'm assuming all these speakers are already uh, plumbed in, and I do like the little sunroof feature here, or not sunroof, but this bill slides out of the way instead of just having the sunscreen up there. You can completely block it out, or if you're raising the loader to complete height, um, you can see it out the top. And of course, you got these little side windows. You got to watch them, the pinchy fingers, but kind of like an old Chevrolet truck or any of really the old trucks where you crack the window and get some air coming in if you wanted to and then of course you got a rear latch on the back window back here all the air ride adjustment seat settings are on the side here and you have to excuse the wheat and fertilize I open the back window make sure the spreader was doing good over here you've got a pretty deep pocket um, everything's dirty already another cup holder deep pocket here to store stuff in. I'm just using this to keep my winch pins in. Another uh, window that opens outward. So back out here on the outside we have the DEF tank, diesel tank, and a toolbox. I wish that toolbox was higher up on the loader because more than likely I'm going to end up knocking that off. Um, as far as the exterior goes, the light package i don't know if those lights come on this cab or not but you've got the two up top there and then these two here on both sides and then uh caution and turn signals when i get to do the 50 hour maintenance i'll open the hood and check out all of that um it's got initial break-in period on the engine oil of 50 hours so we'll do a under the hood video uh, once we get to that point. Coming around this side, you do have a second door over here and then quick connect um, hydraulics here. I wish it had the lever style. The M7s I know have the uh, one piece disconnect, but that's a bigger, higher end tractor. This one did come with the mirrors and then there's your washer fluid for the rear and rear windshield washer uh, wiper blade. I don't know if these lights come standard or not, or if they're included in that light package. I'll have to find that out. Now, so far after 12 and a half hours of use, the only real complaint <clears throat> I have on this entire tractor so far, which, you know, we hadn't had it long. But the one thing it is just more aggravating than it is anything is on this arm here. This link, if it is in a bind, that little handle is not quite big enough to grab a hold of and twist out. So I'm replaced it with a different style pin. 
and that that I can make that work. Um, the biggest complaint I have is the keeper. I think you can see that. It's a little bitty pin, and that thing is a booger to get in and out with my big hands. And it's easy to lose. It's got a safety latch on it where you have to pull and then pull it out. Um, and it kind of spring loads it makes them want to shoot. So what I'll do is I'm going to replace that pin and put a uh, T-handle type pin there and then a uh, linch pin keeper on the bottom or something that form or fashion. It'll just make it a little bit easier. Uh, and mainly that's just because I've got bigger hands. Now, one thing, uh, stepping up in tractor size that I didn't really pay any mind to, and it's not really an issue, but um, since this is a heavier duty tractor, it is a category two uh, three point with the exterior hydraulics. And what that boils down to is all my equipment's Cat 1, and that is a smaller diameter pin. The three-point setup is a Cat 2, and you can see, move this pin, you can see the difference in the size of the pins. You can buy a Cat 1 to Cat 2 pin and change out on your implements. It'll cost anywhere from 4 to $6 per pin. And keep in mind, a lot of these Cat 1 implements are not built to withstand the forces a Cat 2 tractor will put on them. I think the seed spreader will be fine. My bush hog will be fine. Um, but I would bought a bigger, heavier duty bush hog beforehand, not anticipating this upgrade to a Cat 2 tractor. Um, I guess mainly the biggest concern would be the gearboxes. And if they can handle the PTO and torque that this tractor will be putting out versus a Cat 1 tractor. Of course, most everything is sure pin protected or slip clutch protected. But just keep that in mind. Um, this series tractor is a Cat 2. And, um, you know, I run that Cat 1 pin in there. I only had to put out like 800 pounds of fertilizer so. So I went ahead and just did this in a pinch. Um, I will end up getting cat two pins and putting on here. I've already did it on the bush hog. And I should have just bought more while I was down there, but I wanted to see if I could find them <clears throat> cheaper than where I'd originally gotten them. But past that, I mean, that pin's not really that big of a deal, but you know, it was a little frustrating trying to <laughs> change that little keeper out and keep from losing it um we purchased this one from Kubota chattanooga as well and uh we'll keep you posted and i'll do a we'll do some videos working with the tractor and then we'll for sure do one of the 50 hour maintenance uh engine oil change and checking air filters and everything but Pretty much that's it for this video. I think I've covered pretty much everything just introducing the tractor. Um, if there's anything you would like to see, let us know. And I will do my best to cover it because I couldn't find too many M5091 videos like the excavator vid videos I've been doing. Um, they want too much information on that kxo 57 so if there's anything you'd like to see and i can show it closer up just let me know in the comments and um we'll do our best to make a video covering your inquiry but until next video thank you for watching